Welcome back to another episode of Stuff I Make with Grand Inquisitor Chris. Now I belong to a whole series of uh, web forums and web pages and uh, sites and stuff, and one thing that I've seen a lot of people talk about is the uh, idea that they're just starting out this hobby and what do they need to get to paint figures. And every time that I see this question posed, everyone says, oh, well, you need to get this paint, you need to get that paint. And everyone basically just uh, wants to pitch their favorite paint and everything. So what I'm going to do is go through this video a little differently. So you want to get started on painting. Um, it doesn't matter what you're painting, if you're painting a figure or painting terrain. Um, I'm going to tell you what you need and then I'm going to make a basic uh, suggestion as far as what I think would be best for a beginning painter. So first thing you're going to need is a figure or something to paint. Now in this case this is a pre-painted figure but let's just say this was something I wanted to paint. Now um, if you're just beginning painting something you need to understand is your hands have body oil on them so anytime that you go to paint something you're going to want to wash your hands first. I usually use dish soap that way it gets all the oils and everything out of my skin. If the figure that you got is something that you assembled out of a kit, like a Games Workshop kit or something where you're having to glue it together, you probably have fingers, uh, you probably have body oils and stuff from your fingers handling it on the figure. So before you actually paint the figure, you're going to want to go ahead and clean it. You can either clean it in uh, soapy water, or if you just want to go ahead and um, the biggest areas where the paint would come off because the body oils would be the raised surfaces. If you just want to take some rubbing alcohol and a small piece of paper towel, and here I have some of these uh, shop towels that I've cut up into small squares, put some alcohol on it, rub the figure down, it's going to get all the raised surfaces, which is where the most wear and tear is going to be on the figure. So that's where the paint will wear off the first. Okay, so let's say that you got a metal figure. Um, I've seen some people talk about uh, putting metal figures into acid or something to clean off the body oils on them so uh, that they can get all of the oils and everything off the release agents. You don't need to do that. Um, at least I haven't had to. Uh, there's very few companies that leave enough release agent on them to make that into a problem. Um, if you want to make something super long wearing, something that you're really worried about, you can go ahead and soak them in a solution of watered down vinegar. Um, do that for a while. Uh, some people go really overboard with it. And I know a person that actually, when they primed them, they would put them in the oven and bake them for an hour and a half at like 150 degrees just so that the, the primer was baked on. Um, I don't do that. If you're doing plastic figures, it's not going to be a huge problem. Um, plastic. Thankfully, because it's not heavy and it's uh, not going to rub against stuff really hard, the paint will generally stay on fairly well. So, like I said, first thing you're going to want to do is if you assembled the figure, just wipe it down with something like some alcohol or something to get all of the body oils from your fingers off of it. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to prime it. So, a lot of people will tell you their favorite uh, version of priming if you're just getting into painting figures and, and terrain and stuff. If you're, uh, for the figures especially, you need to prime it just because that gives the paint something uh, good to adhere to. I myself use the cheapest spray paint they have at Walmart. It's like 98 cents a can. This is a can of flat black. Um, if you want to invest in a more expensive primer, you can. If you're doing something with styrofoam or the uh, foam board, this stuff will eat into it. Um, there is a brand of foam paint made by Krylon that you can get um, probably have to go to a craft store to find it that you can actually spray on styrofoam that doesn't eat into it but you're going to need to prime it however you're going to do it if you're doing terrain you're going to see people talking about black bombing it and what black bombing something is is they take uh, acrylic craft paint and they brush it on and the reason it's called black bombing is because the uh, probably the two most used colors are going to be black or white craft paint. Um, black especially because it gives you the nice dark color to start out with and it also makes it easier to see if you missed a spot because if you black bomb it and it's on styrofoam you're going to see the styrofoam poking through and you really want to make sure that you coat it well. So that's what black bombing is. It's basically just priming it with craft paint. 
So, let's say that you've gotten to the point of you've got your figure, you've assembled it, you've cleaned it, you've primed it. Um, another thing that you're going to want to look at is uh, if you're going to do spray priming, I bought one of these at Walmart in the spray paint section. It's just a little attachment that goes on top of the can. If you're doing a lot of priming um, or a lot of sealing, this is an incredible tool to have because your hand and your finger will get tired very quickly. This makes it easier to just hold it and spray. Okay, so let's see. You've got your figure, you've, you've uh, cleaned it, you've assembled it, you've cleaned it, you've primed it, you're ready to paint. Now you're going to need some paint brushes. Now I've seen people post uh, threads saying, well, okay, well, I want to start painting, what kind of brushes do I need? And I see a lot of people pointing out these expensive brushes that you can get at the game store that they go to. Um, brushes can be incredibly expensive. And as you paint more and more, you're going to find that you need a variety of brushes. Now, I've been working on figures for probably 30-ish years that I've been into gaming. And the first paint jobs, let me, let me just clarify something that everyone should know in the beginning. The first things you do are going to suck bad. And the reason they're going to suck bad is because every aspect of every hobby has a learning curve painting especially because you need to learn how to apply the paint you need to learn um, the techniques for highlighting for shadowing for all of these things and you're going to have to learn how to use your paint you're going to have to learn what brushes to use you're going to have to figure out how much detail you can put in uh, my hands shake real bad so i uh tend to not do very much figure painting anymore um, because I can only do a few figures before I'm just really worn out and tired from it. But I do still do some of the figure work and I do still do some of the larger figures, uh, vehicles and stuff. But you have to figure all these things into what you're doing. So if you're just getting into this aspect of the hobby, if you're just getting into figure painting or terrain painting or whatever you want, let me make you some recommendations because something that no one ever seems to really recognize when they recommend their favorite paintbrush or their favorite paint uh, brand is that every paint is different. Um, the different manufacturers make paints in different thicknesses, uh, different pigment saturations. The pigment is the coloration agent in it. So the more pigment you have in something, the more intense and deep that color is going to be. Um, the thinner the paint is, the more times you're going to have to go over it with that color. So it's not going to be just one coat and it's done. You're going to have to go over it in several coats. You're going to have to determine how far you want to go with your figure. For those of you that have seen figures for the Games Workshop games, Age of Sigmar, uh, Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer 40k, um, Necromunda, all the games that they're putting out, some of the articles in the White Dwarfs have literally 40 different steps that they will take to paint one figure. And I don't think you're going to be at that point if you're, if you're just getting started. So let's talk about my recommendations to you if you're just getting started. Not just because it's what I like, but because I think it's going to be the best for a beginning painter and the best... Uh, bang for your buck. It's going to be the most effective economical means for you. Now a lot of people are going to suggest uh, professional paint companies like Citadel Miniatures uh, makes uh, paints. You're going to find Armory Painter, Vallejo Paints, um, a whole series of different companies that make paints. And each of those paints is going to be slightly thicker or thinner than one another. Um, some of them are going to require chemicals to clean your brushes, some of them are not. Most of them are going to be acrylics, so you'll just be cl uh, cleaning your brushes and cleaning up with water. But depending on what company you use is going to determine a whole list of learning factors to use that paint. So this is what I recommend if you're just a beginning painter. Go to a craft store or even to Walmart and use the craft paints. There's a lot of people that are going to tell you, oh, well, the craft paints are too thick. Well, the people that tell you that obviously are not very experienced at painting, 
because if they were, they would realize that if it's thick, you just thin it down with water. Additionally, one of the additional bonuses to using craft paints like this, if you go to a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, is that the, these, there's a, each of those retailers will carry about three to five different uh, companies that make the craft paints. And each of those companies makes probably two to three hundred different colors. And while, of course, they're all going to have a red and they're all going to have a blue and they're all going to have a white, there is going to be slight variations between all their colors. So there's going to be like 20 different uh, shades of purple. There's going to be 20 different shades of blue. There's going to be 20 different blue-greens, oranges, reds, the whole nine yards. Going to craft paints like this means that you have at a craft store probably about a thousand different color variations that you can choose from. So if you want a particular gray, you can go there and look through all their grays and find one from those companies. If you're looking for a particular blue because your character has a special color of blue hair or blue eyes or blue uh, highlights on their armor, using the craft paints you can find the blue that you're looking for. And like I said, this is going to be a thicker paint than some of the stuff for Games Workshop, so you just thin it down with water. Um, and it means that you're saving a huge amount of money because a little jar like this will be about three to four dollars. One of these will be usually somewhere between 75 cents and a buck 25. Um, if you go when they're having them on sale, they may be 30 to 50 percent off. So you can get a lot more of these than you can of these. And you can pick your colors out, and instead of having to sit there and mix your colors, oh, I'm going to add a, a drop of this blue and a drop of that blue and a drop of this whatever to make the colors that you're doing, you can just pick your colors out directly. And if you're just beginning, yes, you're going to need to learn to use this paint, but if you pick Citadel, you're gonna to need to learn to use this paint. If you pick Vallejo, you're going to need to learn to use that paint. Whatever paint you, you, you decide on, you have to learn to use. And when you learn to use it, and it's going to be a process, every paint color is going to be a process, or every paint company is going to be a process. When you learn to use it, you're going to start getting better and better and better and getting better and better effects. And another bonus to using the colors from the craft stores is that when you use these, there's going to be a whole variety of specialty paint effect stuff that you can get. So you can get pigment extender that allows the paint to dry slower and makes the paint uh, stay wet longer for doing things like blending or weathering. You're going to find crackle effects that allow you to cause the paint to crack up as it dries so you basically get the undercolor showing through. You're going to find pearlizing mediums that make it look uh, kind of jewel-like or creamy. You're going to find all of these different things that you can add in, and they're so much cheaper, especially if you're learning, than going ahead and, and using something like these. Now, next thing you're, you have to do is you're going to need some brushes. So, I've seen people post, well, what, what do I need to do to get brushes, uh, what brushes are good to get for my painting? And I'll see someone post a paintbrush that costs five bucks, seven bucks, twelve bucks, these paintbrushes can get super expensive super fast. So if you're just getting started, if you go to a craft store, um, if you go to a craft store like Hobby Lobby or uh, Michaels or even Walmart in their arts and crafts section, you're going to find these bags of brushes. And they're not the greatest brushes in the world, but they're also only five dollars a bag. And the reason I got a couple here is because there's actually this, the company that does these makes three different varieties. And I couldn't find the third variety. But you basically have this one, which has a lot of standard paint brushes. You've got these nice big ones. Um, you've got some fairly thin ones. You've got a second one, which has a variety of some uh, standardized brushes, a few sponge ones, and a few big ones. And then there's a third one that I couldn't find that. Uh, has a ton of sponge brushes. So you've got the sponge brushes like you have here, you have little dabbers, 
a whole bunch of sponge brushes and I think that one's going to be used more for stenciling. Um, it's great for some of the weathering effects. There is a use for it, but for the price of two of the paint brushes that I could get at a, uh, that I would need to get at a craft store, or one paint brush if I got it at a game store because the game companies are so expensive, I can get two entire bags. And so let's open up this bag and we'll talk about why it's such a great deal. Okay. So, you're going to need to get a brush for doing your detail. So, in here, here's a brush. This will be good enough for doing most of your detail work. Like I said, you're going to need to learn to use your paints. You're going to need to learn to use your brushes. Uh, if you've got a slightly larger area like a cape, you've got this brush. Um, large flat surfaces, if you're doing something like a writing beast. Plus we've got all these brushes. Um, you're going to have a ton of stuff. If you wet this one down, this one's fairly fine. That one. That one. Okay, so for $5, I've got seven brushes here that I can use on miniatures. And they're not going to be the most tiny detail brushes, but unless you're at the stage of actually sitting there and painting in the eyeballs and painting in lettering and everything else, as a beginning painter, this is what you need. This bag was five bucks. You got seven brushes for your figure. Now let's see. Let's say that you want to make a little altar or something, and you need to do some uh, terrain painting. You got these ones for dry brushing. Dry brushing takes a huge toll on brushes, so you got these two for dry brushing. Um, if you're dry brushing something smaller, you got these two, three for dry brushing. Okay, so for five bucks, we've got seven brushes to use on your figures. We've got five brushes for using on dry brushing. And this one for the figures, this one would be good for dry brushing as well. For the figure size stuff, if you're doing something larger, like I said, terrain painting or uh, painting up like a, a larger figure, like a dragon or a, or a golem or something, you have these ones. So seven brushes for painting and figures. Five brushes for dry brushing. If you're doing a really large piece and you need a lot of coverage quickly, you've got these ones for your terrain. And then I've got six brushes I can use for whatever. So for five bucks, I've got all the paint brushes I need to do some figure painting and to do some train painting and to do some dry brushing. I've even got a couple of these sponges that I can use when I'm doing some of the weathering and stuff. But for a beginning painter, this is what I recommend. Because this is what I use. And like I said, I've been painting for... I've been gaming for 30-ish years, and I've been painting for a lot of that time. And like I said, everything that you're going to learn is going to be a learning process. Everything that you try. So your first figures, your first pieces of terrain, you're going to be proud of them. Or maybe you won't. Um, <clears throat> I remember a few of the figures that I did first that just looked like utter crap. Of course, at the time, I was also using model paints, which is a whole other story because you can't really thin that down uh, as easily as you can in acrylic paint because you have to use thinner and get everything mixed right and everything is so tiny and expensive. But... Uh, like I said, this is a, a good thing for a beginning painter. Five dollars for this. If you wanted to splurge and just get yourself all the way set up, go ahead and get yourself one or two of these. And then one of these ones that has the mixture of a couple of sponges and some other things. Let's get you all the way set up. Um, I also use this, one of these brushes, for when I'm dusting stuff off to seal it. Okay. So, 
you've gone and you've gotten your paints, your brushes, you've gone ahead and uh, assembled your figure, you've cleaned your figure, you've primed your figure, you've got the paints that you're going to use to paint it, you paint it up. So now you have to seal it because the paint will adhere to the primer and look nice and everything, but you need to seal it to keep it protected. So if you're going to seal it, you can go ahead and buy the fancy uh, sealers from the, the companies like Army Painter and everything, um, but those are going to be kind of expensive. What I recommend is that you just go out and buy a bottle of Krylon. Now, Krylon makes really good sealants for a whole variety of things. This was an extra can that I had left over because I need to go to Walmart and buy some more Krylon uh, sealant. But this was a can of Krylon that I left over. All the Krylon clear stuff is going to work great. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this matte finish. This was actually more expensive because it was bought from an arts and crafts section. When you buy something from an art store, it's going to be more expensive because there's a term in the art community called what the market will bear. So if they think that you're willing to pay 12 bucks and they put this on sale and you pay 12 bucks, then they know they can keep it at 12 bucks because that's what the market will bear. People going to an art store are going to pay higher prices than people going to like a Walmart. So I buy uh, my Krylon at Walmart. This is just something that I picked up because they were out of Krylon when I got this particular can. And I gotta go back to Walmart and buy some more Krylon because now I'm down to this can. Um, but I use Krylon. You're gonna have to learn how to prime figures. Uh, you don't want to overspray it. You don't want to underspray it. You want to make sure that you just have a good coverage. You need to make sure you shake your can up really well. Same thing goes for sealant. You don't want to fill in all the gaps. You don't want to spray this with like 10,000 coats and have it like an inch thick in Krylon. You just want a good coverage that covers the entire figure. You don't have to give it like 30 different coats, just one good coat that covers it the entire figure. Now, one of the problems that you're going to find with some sealants is that over time, depending on the temperature conditions, some sealants will get a little sticky, even after the figure's dried. So one of the issues that I ran in with Krylon, and I love Krylon as a sealant, it looks fantastic, and it actually makes the colors pop a little more to me. But one of the issues that I ran into was figures that I had sitting on my shelf a year or two later had gotten a little sticky because of the heat and, heat and atmospheric conditions. It gets a little warm here during the summer, a little muggy. So they got a little sticky and a little bit of hair would stick to them. And so I found a solution to that that actually makes it even better. I do two coats of sealant. The first one I do is the Krylon, and it doesn't matter what Krylon you put on it, it's going to be a little bit glossy. Then I go ahead and I hit it with a small, uh, with a light coat after the Krylon has dried, completely dried. Don't pick it up, don't handle it. But after the Krylon has completely dried, I go ahead and give it a coat of Tester's Dull Coat Lacquer. Now that is something that you do have to go to an art supply store or a model shop to get. It's about $5, it's in a tiny little spray can. I'm currently out of it, I have to go back and get some more. But it is worth every penny because it, you can get it in gloss or dull coat. If you want it in the gloss, that'll give you the shiny coat that you want if you're doing something like a vehicle. If you're doing a figure that is a person, you don't want them to have shiny skin. You want them to have a nice dull coat skin. So when you hit it with the dull coat uh, lacquer, it's going to take that, that shiny Krylon finish and make it flat. And the Krylon, like I said, with the Krylon, just give it one good coat so that you've coated the figure. With the tester's dull coat, you may want to go back because you're not... With the Krylon making everything shiny, when you spray it with the tester's dull coat, it's going to be shiny, but it's already shiny. So let the tester's dull coat dry. Look at your figure and see if you missed any spots, and just give it another light spray. Um, that's my recommendations. Like I said, if you're just getting into painting, don't spend twelve dollars on a brush. Don't spend. Don't even spend five dollars on one brush. If you're just learning, spend five dollars on one of these bags. If you're just learning to paint, my recommendation is get this. Because if you're just learning to paint, it doesn't matter what paint you're going to use, you're going to have to learn to use it. 
and it's a lot cheaper to learn to use these than it is to have to learn to use one of these and you get a whole lot of other options um, <clears throat> I guess that's really all I have to say right now guys but I just wanted to uh, make this for people that are just getting into the hobby and just learning because like I said every time I see someone post on this everyone posts oh well you need to use Vallejo you need to use this you need to use that if you're just learning to do this you're gonna have to learn anything you do so it's easier to learn this and once you've learned this you can go out go ahead and go out and buy some of these there's actually a few colors of games workshop that I can only get from games workshop so those colors I will go ahead and buy from games workshop but like I said once you've used to, this to learn to paint you can always go ahead and learn to use these and it's a lot easier to learn this after you've painted a whole bunch of figures with this and like I said if this is too thick for you go ahead and add some water um, you're just going to use a little palette use a uh, if you're mixing your paints you can go ahead and use like a little cap of some sort just whatever you have that's got enough just pour some of the paint into the cap add a little bit of water thin it down to the level you want it add a couple of drops of water at a, at a, at a chance or at a, at a uh, shot thin it down to what you want it to be and then paint it's not that hard and it doesn't have to be as expensive as everyone seems to make it out to be in all of the videos or in all of the posts that I've seen um, just wanted to give you guys this heads up hopefully this helps out some of the new people in the hobby and hopefully it encourages you to keep trying because I know that when you first start out there's gonna be a lot of discouragement because you're gonna make a lot of stuff and you're gonna set it on the board and it's gonna be next to someone else's figure that's ten times better because they've been painting for a hell of a long time. There's no reason for any beginning painter to ever feel bad about what they did because they're still learning. Even at this point, I still learn things. I watch people's YouTube channels looking to, to figure out how something is done. And I just thought I'd put this out there because I thought it, it would be something encouraging for uh, new time uh, crafters and painters and hopefully it it has that effect well i guess i've made this a long-winded enough video so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, call it quits have a good time guys uh if you like the video go ahead and give it a like if you like the um if you want to keep following what i'm doing go ahead and subscribe to my channel leave any comments you got in the comment section and i will talk to you guys later bye